I'm Nicole. I'm Jensen. And I'm Charlotte. And we're here from the Santa Barbara Middle School Teen Press, and today we're here with... Hunter. Nice to meet you. In the film, the bigger, the bigger story is childhood. Tell us a story about your childhood. A story about my childhood. The first story that comes to mind is that I was walking my dog one day. I used to, I grew up in Spain, and I was walking my dog out uh, on a track, and I got attacked by another dog. <laughs> And got a huge, I got a huge bite on my leg. The dog kind of plumped its jaw around me, and uh, I started screaming. And my father ran out and picked me up, threw me over his shoulder, and drove me to the local hospital. <laughs> and they, they had no anaesthetic in this hospital. It was, and so they sewed the stitches up without any anaesthetic. And so it was quite a painful one. Oh, oh my God. So there you go. That's a random story from my childhood. <laughs> And making this movie, did it change the way you will raise your kids? I absolutely think that making this film changed the way that I will bring up my kids. I, I, I feel that the atmosphere of love and compassion that Lob Song, who's the founder of the, the school and the community that I filmed in, he creates this wonderful atmosphere, very supportive, very loving, and they have discipline, but it's not its not sort of military-style discipline. So I do feel that kids need to be encouraged rather than, you know, kind of told off. Yeah. And at Jomste Gastal, is that? Jomste Gastal. Oh, okay. <laughs> was there a kid who reminded you, reminded you of yourself? Was there a kid that reminded me of myself? Well, I was quite quiet as a kid, actually. I was pretty shy. So, yeah, they were definitely shyer kids, but I have to say, on the whole, they were just kind of bubbling over with life and happiness and laughter. And so, I mean, Tashi Joma, who's, who's kind of the, the main kid that I filmed, is completely unlike me. She's, she's a complete rebel. She's totally, she's a bit crazy. She's sort of lawless. And I was the opposite. I was always very well behaved. <laughs> have you shown the film at Rob Sun's school yet? I would love to go back to the community myself and show them the film and really just uh, witness the reaction of the kids because I imagine that them seeing themselves on screen is going to be super exciting. So unfortunately, it's a very, very long way away. So I, I'm not probably going to get the, the chance to do that. So what I have done is I've sent a link and they're going to download the film and they're going to watch it. And one of the teachers has promised to take lots of photos. And, and I've, I've also asked the kids to write a little review for me. They're very good at writing letters, so they're going to review it and, and send it. Do you have any anxieties about showing it? Anxieties about showing the film, my goodness. Friday was the first day, Friday here at Mountain Film was the first day that anyone, anywhere in the world, apart from apart from friends and family, had seen it. And it was the first time I'd seen the film on a big screen uh, with a room full of people. And I was absolutely <laughs> terrified. So I had a lot of anxiety. Um, but luckily, it went really well. And it was actually shown to the local high school kids here. And they laughed in all the right places. And they were a little bit shocked and all the right places and I think they were sort of moved and touched in all the right places so it turned out okay. In the film many children act as bigger brothers and sisters to the people. Um, to the people, or why do you think siblings are so important? Siblings, I have a sister and I, she and I fight the whole time. So uh, I'm maybe not the best person to answer this question. Um, I think what I came away from the experience realizing is that human beings can heal other human beings. The really, the really striking thing is that none of these kids are on medication. The staff aren't even particularly qualified or trained to do this kind of work. But what Love Song does is, is, is he creates a special atmosphere and a special space. And, and the kids kind of heal each other. They really look out for each other and they develop really strong bonds. So it's not just siblings. I think it's, it's human beings really need each other. So I have something here for you. <laughs> 
Is this a gift? Some swag? Uh, yeah, it <laughs> could be. It's on a rock. You can oh, have it if you want. Perfect gift ever. Yeah, thank you. Best, best gift ever. What's the significance of walnuts? Yeah. Hold on. Oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, so pretty much. That is a very cool thing. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, like you said, in the film, the walnuts and the cracking them with the rock, it obviously plays like a big, or it resembles something very big. What do you think? What do you think it really means in the film? I love this. I love this symbolic uh, gift, and I uh, I love the question. The, the mo there's a moment in the film where Tashi Droma, who's uh, up until that point not really um, been very good at making friends, is out with this with this other young girl, and it's just the two of them on a on a road, and. I don't know where she got it from, but Tashi Drama has a walnut, and she uses a rock, breaks it open. And for me, the significance of that moment is that up until that point, she's been very selfish and very sort of self-absorbed. And for the first time ever, she shares. She reaches in, she picks up a bit of walnut, and she offers it to her friend, who takes it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's the first time that she, or that I witnessed her sharing, and it felt like she grew um, to a point where she was able to do that. And I, I was very moved by it. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> so Rob Singh says that where there is a lot of darkness in the world, there are also beautiful shining points of light. How can we help the people in the darkness get back to light, as Rob Singh did with Tashi? Wow, that's a big question. How can we help people in the darkness get back to light? I'm not sure I have the magic answer to that question. I think that's something that we must all kind of search for throughout our lives. Um, I mean, in his case, he's really trying to take the sadness and the suffering that he experienced and turn that into something positive. So I think he's sort of breaking a cycle, a cycle of um, him being born illegitimately, having a very traumatic childhood. And instead of, instead of feeling uh, somehow disadvantaged or as though he'd been given a bad hand in life, he takes that as inspiration inspiration to create a better opportunity for other people, for these other kids. So I think it's about taking, somehow taking the darkness and transforming it. Um, I believe there's a, there's a type of Buddhist meditation called Tonglen meditation, in which you breathe in, you breathe in all the darkness and all the negativity and you breathe out light. So you're sort of recycling the darkness into light. But I don't know quite how to do that yet, so uh, I'll, I'll go back to you. So after watching this film, we all decided that we wanted to connect with the school and make an impact. How can we do that? <laughs> That's really cool to hear because um, they're a lovely, lovely group of human beings and they're very good at writing letters and they would love to hear from you guys. So uh, what, what I can do is uh, absolutely put you in touch with one of, the, one of the teachers there and maybe you guys could kind of start writing to individual students. Um, yeah, and then um, maybe, maybe in a couple of years' time you could go there and spend a few months and teach English and um, I, when I went there, there were a couple of girls from the U.S. teaching the kids soccer and doing sports and stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you, but initially, let's start off with writing letters. There are so many people in this world who are great inspirations, including you, as we are all inspired by others who are your inspirations. Who are my inspirations? Wow. Huh. Well, there are definitely filmmakers who've inspired me. Um, but I think I'm inspired by everyday people doing extraordinary things. So the film that I made before this one is about a paper boy in India who's 14 years old. And I followed him over the course of one day. And he wakes up at four in the morning. He goes out, delivers new... I, I won't say the whole plot of the film, but basically the film follows him over the course of a day. And he works two jobs. He goes to school and he supports his family. And I, I think... 
I think he's a real hero. Um, but he sort of just is getting on with his life in a very quiet way. So obviously they're a big kind of inspirational figures like Gandhi or Nelson Mandela. But I sort of feel like there are so many everyday heroes out there. And I'm, I'm really inspired to go and try and capture their stories and tell their stories so other people can get inspired by them too. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. This is the yeah. coolest thing ever. <laughs> I'm sorry, so. it took me a while to get it. And we also have one more thing. So, at our school, we hang prayer flags in our kiva, and at Mountain Film, prayer flags fly like almost everywhere you look. So, if you could make a prayer flag whose message could, the wind could carry throughout the world, what would it say? Can I can I get my phone out quickly? Because I, I actually wrote I wrote down a I wrote down a quote um, yesterday, which I was going to read in the in the Q and A, and I I never did. But I think this might be what I would. Let me just pull it up. It's a it's a quote from Pema Chodron, and the quote says, "Use what seems like poison as medicine. Use your personal suffering as the path to compassion for all beings." So, use your personal suffering as the path to compassion for all beings. I like that. I, that's, I think that's what I put on my prayer flag. That's really cool. Okay. We have this little sticker. Wow. Can we put it on your forehead? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yay! Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs> Super cool. We need the prayer flag, we need the prayer flag. Props, we need props, props. Hold up the wall. You guys good trees. I'm holding the wall. Everyone hold up the wall. Everybody hold up, hold up the wall though. Here we go. Okay, I got it. Ready? Faces close together so we can see the stickers on the four of them. Get in there close. Come on. Oh, I'm getting in there. Yeah. I ate my other walnut though. So. <laughs> <laughs>